Circumstance does not change responsibility. As a man, if you've got responsibility, your circumstances do not change that. You do whatever you've got to do regardless of how you feel. Welcome to the Bedros Coolian Show. Hey, what's happening, friends? Welcome to the Bedros Coolian Show. I'm Bedros Coolian, and today we're going to have a great time talking about shit that I wish I knew sooner in life. Um, so I made a list of five things here that I wish I knew sooner in life. A couple of them are quotes. A couple of them are just these, these ideas that once you grasp them, you'll be like, holy hell, my life is going to be better faster. So uh, let's get started. But before we do, someone earlier... Um, uh, I was talking to, to to Maine and Andrew when we were filming something else earlier. Actually, we were filming a video sales letter, a VSL, right? Uh, for the project, by the way, let me let me talk to you guys about the project real quick. Let's just let's just take a little detour and talk about the project. See, I believe in all of life you have to keep evolving. In fact, in my book, Man Up, I talk about the concept of never peak, the best is yet to come, right? Like I, I realized early on in life that people who peak in college or high school or in their 30s, and then it's all downhill from there. What a sad, pathetic life, right? And I share that with you guys because um, uh, my, my, my whole mindset is like, I'm always gonna be learning new things, evolving my businesses, you know, experiencing new things in the world by traveling the world with my family. And my goal is, as I get to a ripe old age of 100 years old, you know, I might be learning a new language on Rosetta Stone as I take my last breath and die. Like, I don't want to peak. I always want to know the best is yet to come. In fact, if you all ever watch The Sopranos, one of my favorite quotes from Tony Soprano was, um, he said, remember when is the lowest form of conversation that any two people can have. Like, hey, remember when I had hair? Remember when I was Jack? Remember when, um, you know, I made all this money? Remember when all the chicks found me attractive? Remember when I was the top athlete in college? Like, don't be that guy, man. Like, always find new reasons, new seasons to excel at something new, man. This is why I do those six-week challenges, right? Um, look, I wanted to run a marathon because I was like, it's something new to me. I lift weights. Um let me run a marathon. And I trained for six weeks and ran a marathon. By the way, if you all want to run a marathon and you want to take my whole training program, nutrition program, recovering program, and mindset coaching program for free, um, bedroskoolian.com forward slash challenge, right? Go do the, go run a marathon. See how awesome life is when you do something that you have created this limiting belief factor on. You've created this block like, oh, I can't do that in six weeks. I'm telling you, you can. I'm telling you, you can. Uh, bedroskoolian.com forward slash challenge. It's it's yours for free, my six-week marathon guide. Uh, it's the same exact program that my coach built out for me when I ran the San Diego Rock and Roll Marathon. But since then, I do a couple of six-week challenges a, uh, a year, from rock climbing to surfing to guitar lessons to salsa to whatever. And some things I end up liking and doing and, you know, jujitsu, for example, or surfing and other things, I'm like, ah, never do that again, right? But I conquered something that I previously had told myself that I can't do. The whole idea there is to never peak, the best is yet to come. So I suppose we should add fucking number six to that never peak the best is yet to come so there you go it's not five things it's six, six things now on this episode of shit i knew sooner but i'm talking to you guys about the project because um in the spirit of never peak the best is yet to come i was like all right so the project is awesome it's 75 hours long myself and then ray who's the navy seal and steve who's a, a former marine and both great entrepreneurs as well and dear friends of mine um, we, we take a you know, group of men through a 75 hour experience along with a whole bunch of other junior cadre and instructors, former graduates of the project, take these men through the self-development program for 75 hours, help them flip the switch. We help them break limiting beliefs. We help them, uh, you know, rewrite their story of their life, right? Because so many of you have maybe have this fucked up story that you actually believe in, that you are not allowed to, supposed to uh, experience happiness. Uh, untrue, man. You're supposed to have a life of bliss. You're supposed to have amazing happiness. You're supposed to have wealth. You're supposed to be a person of massive influence and impact, but you can't be any of that until you flip the switch and, and dismantle the 1.0 version of yourself and become the 2.0 version of yourself. And so we were filming a video earlier before we got on set here at the BK show, uh, which is a video sales letter because I decided, well, as much as the project is fucking awesome and it's, we're going, uh, as of the time of filming this, we're about to do class six 
16 next week. Um, uh, 48 dudes are scheduled to come to that class for 75 hours, right? Um, I was like, man, 75 hours is great. And yes, there's a brotherhood where we you know, hang out in a, a Facebook group and then we see each other once a year at annual events and guys that are within closer proximity across the country will hang out and you know, do fun shit over the weekends. I was like, but how cool would it be if after the 75 hours, there was also a 12 month business coaching life coaching program with me where we meet up three times a year. So imagine going through the project, the 75 hour experience, graduating, and then your 12 month coaching program, you're dropped into my mastermind group with a group of like-minded men that are driven by purpose, passion, uh, profits, to be able to really level up, right? I'm like, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. So the new version of the project is gonna be exactly that, 75 hours, plus 12 months of coaching included. Uh, so I was making the video sales letter for that. Um, it was like a 12 minute sales letter or video, but it took about an hour to film because I'm supposed to read a fucking teleprompter. And, and, and if you're an immigrant like me and you can't read out loud really well, um, you know, it was a bit of a challenge. So it took an hour. At the end of it, I was like feeling a little exhausted. And I jokingly said, you know, before I shoot the BK show, a couple episodes of the BK show here, I should snort some cocaine, jokingly. So please don't go fucking messaging me saying, hey, Bedros, can I help you with your cocaine habit? I am not a fucking cokehead. Um, but, but I'm here to tell you that um, I did try cocaine once and I was telling Andrew and, and Maine, who was uh, behind the camera, I was like, man, the one time I tried cocaine, it fucked me up so bad that I'll never do it again. And you've probably heard this name before, Michael Botticelli, good old Michelangelo Botticelli. Uh, this guy was having a party at his house back in, oh, I don't know, 2000, 2001, in his apartment, and uh, we were both personal trainers at good old uh, Fountain Valley LA Fitness. And Michael was having this party, him and his roommate, Dave Awawi, were having a a little party and they invited me the introvert and being an introvert i'm thinking like all right you know i'm gonna go there and i'm gonna i'm gonna hobnob and i'm gonna network with people and i'm gonna socialize and i get there and my asshole's puckered and i'm like fuck man i don't want to be here it's you know cool people i like mike i like i like michael uh dave Owawi, and i like mike but i don't want to be around all these fucking people and uh some people back in the corner there were snorting something and i was like hmm what are they doing they saw me watching and they're like, hey, you want to take a little toot of cocaine? You know, liven it up a bit. I was like, fuck it. Let's give it a shot. And like anything I do, I just took such a massive snort that the fucking thing shot down my sinuses, down to my throat. And I don't know if you all know this about cocaine, but apparently it numbs anything that it touches. And so it started to numb my throat and I started having this feeling like, like I can't breathe, like my throat is closing up and, and, and I started panicking and so I fucked up everybody's party experience because I'm like, y'all gotta call 911, get the ambulance here. And my throat is closing up, I can't breathe. And it was either Dave Awawi or Michelangelo Botticelli. It's like, hey bro, relax, that's just the coke. Your throat is fine, but uh, the fucking throat is just numb. So it feels like it's closing up, but it's not. And after whatever, I don't know, 40 minutes or so, it went away. But uh, having said that, brother, I'm high on life and I will uh, never do cocaine again. But uh, there's that cocaine story for you. So uh, being stupid is um, has definitely been a part of my youth in my 20s. And uh, I try not to be as stupid as I gain these years in age. Now, whopping 48 years old, I no longer drink, I no longer smoke weed. Uh, and recently, by the way, shout out to uh, Sean, the maitre d' at the Addison, at the Grand Del Mar. The Addison is a three-star Michelin star restaurant, which the three stars are the highest rating you can get from the Michelin um, folks. Uh, great restaurant. Me and the family have been going there for some 10 years or so. And uh, Sean's like, hey, man, I saw that you announced on social media that you don't drink anymore, that you don't smoke weed. Um, he goes, but it's weird because you got that poison in front of you. And he points to my Diet Coke. And I'm like, damn, bro. Like, what do you mean it's poison? He goes, well, my wife's a nurse. And it's not like I don't know. I know that there's all types of weird fucking chemicals and soda pop. And I know that uh, that artificial sweetener is bad for you and we have to limit that in fact eliminate that out of our diet but it's one of those things that i chose to stay ignorant on because i enjoy the taste of diet coke until sean was like hey bro 
uh, you're drinking that poison. So I was like, Sean, as of right now, I'm officially done with this as well. And so anyways, man, there you go. At, at the rate that I'm going, uh, I'm going to be drinking uh, water and breathing air because I'm going to eliminate everything out of my life. But it's awesome, man. I love being connected with my my, 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 my conscience and my conscience was gnawing away at me, telling me to stop everything that is not serving you. It's like this constant loop, stop everything that is not serving you. And that was alcohol. That was weed. That was all these things. And I wasn't even addicted or dependent on it, but it's like, why am I using it as social lubricant? When I have the gift of gab, I know how to connect and communicate with people. I know how to calm my mind. I know how to go and breathe, do box breathing and be able to calm my nervous system. I don't need alcohol. I don't need weed. I don't need Diet Coke with my food. I can just drink like Perrier and, and iced water and be fine, right? But so much of the time we begin to justify this shit. And then until someone that we like and trust kind of puts it in our face and goes, hey, man, you're going to keep drinking that poison? Um, I was like, no, I guess not. As of today, I'm done. So he took the Diet Coke away from me and um, sparkling water it was. So anyway, man, let's jump into this episode of shit that I wish I knew sooner in life. Um, and, and I think you guys are going to get great value from this. If you're like in your 40s, 50s, 60s, you might be like, well, this isn't for me then because I'm not in my 20s. This is not just for 20 year olds, 30 year olds or even teens. This is for anybody because undoubtedly you're going to take away a bullet point from here. So with that said, be sure to subscribe and like and comment and blah, blah, blah and all that bullshit. And oh, by the way, guys, seriously, truly, thank you so much for like you guys are blowing me up on YouTube and then on the podcast platforms, like our shit just keeps ranking super high. It's this Pedro's cooling show that I decided to do out of this passion to want to serve men and masculinity and humanity. To be honest with you, lots of women now have joined the tribe. So ladies, welcome to the tribe because a lot of the message here applies to women as well in terms of self mastery and personal growth and financial freedom and all those things, right? Being a decent human being living with core values. Um, so shit that I wish I knew sooner. Let's get started. Um, thing number one is this quote that I said for a long time is how you do anything is how you do everything. And I wish I knew that because I was that guy that look, I was lazy in my in my teens and 20s. Um, I let my body go. I was fat. I was always like 30, 40 pounds overweight. Uh, especially in my teens, earlier teens, right? Um, and then once I became a personal trainer in my early 20s, I, I got in shape. And it's so funny, man, you get in shape. And as you start valuing your body and you keep your body fit and athletic, you start taking care of other things in your life. All of a sudden, I started to care more about my car. And hey, let me get that dent fixed. Hey, let me wash my car more frequently. Hey, let me throw out the garbage that I have in my car that it's been accumulating. So truly how you do anything is how you do everything in life. And I know you know this, uh, but if you are ignoring this, because if you've got a messy room, a messy car, a messy body, a, a messy mindset, you probably have a messy bank account and a messy marriage and, and, and messy core values because truly how you do anything is how you do everything. So remember that and just become congruent with your conscience across the board and you will not be that person anxiously uh, living through life, wondering why anxiety and depression is this common theme in your life. Um, it was for me and I realized because I was incongruent with the person I wanted to be because I would do certain things a certain way in my life, but then other things I slacked off on. So how you do anything is how you do everything. Number two, understand that circumstance does not change responsibility. And this is a quote that I got from Big Doug. Big Doug was, um, if you read my book, Man Up, you guys should all go read my book, Man Up. It's a great book, um, Wall Street Journal bestseller sold enough copies to become a New York Times bestseller, but because it's titled Man Up and because it came out in 2018 during the Me Too movement, um, my publisher said, hey, dude, you got shafted by New York Times. Um, you sold enough copies to get on that New York Times bestseller list, but they're not giving you the nod. And at the end of the day, they don't have to, just like Howard Stern, his book, Private Parts, sold enough back in the 90s when it came out. But because the New York Times is not like Howard Stern, they did not give him the nod and put him on the New York Times bestseller list. But anyway, if you read my book, Man Up, you'll hear about the two different um, managers I had at Disneyland when I worked at Carnation Cafe restaurant off of Main Street there, Main Street, USA. And Kathy, who 
was the manager who I did not like as much and was very mean to me and all of my coworkers and was not willing to jump in and do the work because she felt like she's, as a manager, she's in her ivory tower and, you know, would only show up to chastise us and tell us everything we're doing wrong, never really to lend a hel helping hand. And then there was Big Doug. Big Doug was this like Southern man, probably 6'4", six, 6'5", six, bit of a belly, always had a, wore a blue tie and a collared shirt. And he would come in and he'd say, hey boys, what can I help you with? And he'd throw his tie over his shoulder and he'd jump in there. If he had to wash dishes, if he had to you know, work the fryer, if he had to work the, work the grill, work the window, it didn't matter. Like Doug did whatever it took to get those orders out in Carnation Cafe, Disneyland, when I worked there. And I had so much love and respect for that guy because he would still chastise us for things that we fucked up on. But he would also flip his tie over his shoulder and get into the shit with us and get us out of that. Because I've said this before on previous episodes, Carnation Cafe becomes the busiest restaurant on the planet twice a night when during my era in the 90s when the electrical parade would go up and down the Main Street USA. And so to have your manager there not just breathing down your throat and giving you the stink eye, but actually you know, jumping into the shit and helping you, like, man, that really boosted morale for us in the kitchen because that little printer machine was printing up so much fucking food orders. Like, it was just like this long, giant streamer, man. And so one thing Doug told me one time when I showed up late to work and I gave him an excuse. I was like 10 minutes late. And I'm like, hey, Doug, you know, there was traffic on the five freeway and then my car had a, hard, had a hard time starting it. And he just put his hand up, like just stopped me from talking. And I stopped because I have so much respect for that guy. And I looked at him and he goes, hey, circumstance does not change responsibility. And I was like, holy fuck, he's right. Like the fact that I was late, I could have I just left an hour earlier, gotten to work 45 minutes earlier and taken my time and chilled until my shift was gonna start. Circumstance does not change your responsibility. So how often do you use excuses and give excuses to be, well, I didn't sleep well, so I'm not gonna go to the gym. I don't feel good today, honey, so we're not gonna have date night. I don't have the energy, so we're not gonna go out and play, son or daughter, right? Circumstance does not change responsibility. As a man, if you've got responsibility, your circumstances do not change that. You do whatever you've gotta do regardless of how you feel and what your energy level is at. So that was a really great lesson, but big Doug. The third thing I wanna share with you, shit that I wish I knew sooner in life, is that nothing is fatal or final other than death, right? Man, when I was younger, I used to think that, you know, if I screw up here, it's gonna be embarrassing. If I, if I mess this up, this will be the end. I might end up homeless. And if I, if I don't get this right, it's gonna ruin my reputation. And I would always hold back on what I needed to do in life because I was so afraid to go all in because I always labeled things as fatal and final. When in reality, nothing is fatal or final except death. You can't come back from death. You can come back from broke. You can come back from making a stupid decision. You can come back from messing up your reputation. Let me give you proof of that. Do you remember Bill Clinton? Bill Clinton was our president, ladies and gentlemen, and he got a blowjob from Monica Lewinsky, who was an intern. Let me remind you that while president of our country, Bill Clinton was also married to a very fugly woman, Hillary Clinton. I'm talking so fugly that when she fell off the ugly tree, she hit every branch on the way down and then bounced back up and hit the branches back up. Leighton, I know you know what I'm talking about because you're laughing. You've seen Hillary's Clinton pictures, bro. You know what I'm talking about. So I'm sharing this with you because while Bill Clinton was married to a very fugly woman, she, uh, the dude as our president went and got a blowjob and then lied about it to the whole country, to Congress, to Senate. And then when the dress came out with the giant cum stain, you guys remember that? By the way, if you have kids in the car right now, would be a good time to probably to probably censor, to turn off the fucking, to turn off the show. So listen, uh, 
This I should have done probably 19 minutes ago. But guys, I'm going to talk about Bill Clinton coming on Monica Lewinsky's dress. And so if uh, you are going to be listening to this aloud with children nearby, uh, please censor your delicate children's ears. That's what I would do if I had young children listening to me right now. Um, So now that I've given you this um, censorship warning, let us continue. 19 minutes in is when I give you my censorship warning. So the dude comes on her dress, the dress comes to to light, and then finally he goes, yeah, all right, you know, I did it. I got a blowjob from her. In fact, I used a cigar as a dildo uh, while president and while married. And guess what we did as a country? We forgave him. So I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you that, that you can come back from anything. Nothing is fatal, nothing is final other than death. So with that said, if there's something you want to do, there's an experience you want to have, there's something you want to try, there's a business you want to launch, there's a, there's a girl you want to ask, there, 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 there's a thing you, you, you just got to do. Like, do it. Do it. And if you fall flat on your face, your reputation is fucked up, you're, you're embarrassed, you go broke, you're living out of your car for a period of time, who cares? That is the human experience, don't you see? Imagine what a hell of a ride you will have had when you're on your deathbed thinking back about the time that you tried that one thing and then it completely went to shit and you somehow ended up living in a in your car but came back from that and lived a decent life. And uh, what a story to tell, right? I mean, I tell you guys all these stories from my 20s because I want to let you know that like I was a fucking motherfucker that experimented with shit, you know. I'm not happy. I'm not proud of the fact that I was like, you know, got in that police helicopter chase and the the home invasion robberies and the fucking carjackings, you know, but that's that's become part of my history. Right. But I am proud of the fact that I tried fucking a lot of weird shit. A lot of tried a lot of weird shit in my time. And some things were embarrassing. And and actually, my first business that I launched online in 1997, I did end up homeless and I was living out of my 79 Toyota pickup. And guess what? Now at 48, I can tell my son and daughter that story. Now at 48, I can tell you that story, right? So understand that nothing is fatal and final. So go out there and live life. Go out there and live life, experience things. Put the e-brake down on life and fucking go full throttle, all in, zero compromise. Got it? Good. So the fourth thing I want to share with you guys is success loves speed. Listen, if you want any kind of success in life, financial success, relational success, fitness success, mindset success, success loves speed. You can plan all day long what kind of business you want to start, how you're going to market it, where your leads are going to come from, your social media branding, what your logo is going to look like, your podcast, your YouTube show, and then the webinar that you're going to do. And then you're going to have a tripwire where then you're going to have like this triple opt-in after that tripwire. And when they opt in, your cost per acquisition is going to go, it's going to go down because you're going to have made all this money. And then you're going to have callers and setters following up on DMs and shit, and then moving them to a closer. The closer is going to make the deal and then you're going to once you make the deal you're going to start serving the client and the customer that you have great you can plan all of that out on a marker board on anything you want but planning does nothing you must take imperfect action so many of you are out there trying to trying to plan the perfect outcome you know the find the perfect chick start the perfect business develop the perfect body so to develop the perfect body, I gotta, I gotta find the perfect workout and nutrition plan. I gotta find the perfect time that I can work out. I gotta find the perfect gym I can work out in. Success loves speed, motherfucker. And I'm here to tell you that if you just take imperfect action and then lean into perfection as you go, you will have the results that you want. I know this from firsthand experience, right? So make no mistake about it. Success loves speed, taking perfect action because the more planning you do, all you're doing is procrastinating. Over planning is procrastinating. And if you are procrastinating, you are literally telling success that I don't want you, that I repel you, that I despise you. And guess what success does? It evades and eludes you. Success loves speed. Lean into it, motherfuckers. And then finally understand 
that happiness is an inside job. I wish I knew this sooner. I thought that there was something out there that's going to make me happy. Once I get that raise, once I have that role, once I get that chick, once I have that car, once I have that house, and I started to realize that happiness is an inside job. And I, hey, listen, I make an obscene amount of money right now, and I'm very blessed for it. By the way, some motherfucker on social media, on one of these YouTube shorts that my guys put up, um, I saw this, I don't know if y'all saw this, but uh, I was talking about how I left a $7,000 tip uh, actually at the Addison, right? At the Addison. And I said, I wanna make so much money, I wanna be generous with my money, I wanna be able to leave a $7,000 tip uh, because those people are so good to me there at the Addison, uh, the servers, the whole team, Chef Bradley, et cetera, Sean. And somebody was like, well, you live a privileged life. Motherfucker, I came as an immigrant from a foreign country. I was molested as a little boy. I grew up in Section 8 government-assisted housing. I fucking fought off F Troop, a fucking gang in Santa Ana that's fucking violent. I went to three elementary schools, two junior highs, two high schools. I was fucking broke and poor, eating out of fucking dumpsters, had my hair washed with gasoline. Fuck you and your privileged life. I developed these privileges that I have. I created my privileges. I have a privileged life. Fuck you. So having said that, understand that happiness is an inside job. Because if you think some outside external circumstance, like your lady's going to make you happy, your job's going to make you happy when your business does a million dollars a year, it's going to make you happy. Guess what? At 10 million, it didn't make me any happier. A hundred million, it didn't make me any happier because happiness is from within. Happiness is is being congruent with your conscience, right? And your conscience knows what you need to do to have peace of mind, to have bliss, to have joy, to be happy. You're just avoiding it because you wanna just social media suck one more time. You wanna smoke that joint one more time. You wanna hit that vape pen one more time. You wanna stay up late and binge watch TV one more time. Each time you avoid the things that you know will make you happy, like having a morning routine that will set you up to win is a source to happiness. But each time you avoid it, you create anxiety, stress, depression for yourself. So understand that happiness is an inside job and there is no outside element that's ever, ever, going to bring in a level of happiness once you hit a threshold. That doesn't exist. And once you know that, you will always focus on conscience congruency. And so with that said, guys, please be sure to subscribe. If you're here on YouTube, understand that over 70% of you that are watching this right now are not subscribed to this channel. Please subscribe to this channel. If you're on Spotify, iTunes, uh, Shitzer, whatever the fuck it's called, Google, SoundCloud, whatever, I don't get fuck. Thank you so much for listening. I can't tell you guys how grateful I am, how appreciative I am that you guys are listening, sharing. We're growing at a rate of two to 3,000 subscribers a day on YouTube, Spotify, and iTunes, and all the different shits or platforms are giving us such great ratings. And it's because y'all are giving me the reviews, the five-star reviews, and, and more and more people are being recommended this podcast. And we are single-handedly impacting the lives of men and allowing them to unfuck themselves, to develop into the highest levels of themselves, to understand that happiness is an inside job, that you deserve more, that you should have more. You should not be embarrassed of wanting more, of being a savage, of being a servant, of being a fucking leader, of being a king but also know that heavy is the head that weighs the crown. And as a king, you must look after your kingdom. You must look after your tribe. You must be generous. You must be loving and you must shepherd them in the direction of, of absolute success. And so with that said, guys, thank you so much for watching and listening to this episode of the Bedros Koulian Show. Always remember that average is the enemy. Success is your responsibility and change can take place in an instant when you decide to flip the switch.